high school football from across the desert southwest is here. Varsity Blitz starts right now. Good evening and welcome to the Varsity Blitz on 13 on your side. I'm Scott Gross. Thank you so much for choosing to be with us tonight. And I'm Brandon Mejia. Couldn't be happier to have prep football back in action. Have you, Scott, alongside yeah. the action as well? We start tonight with our top game of the week, the defending IVL champions and winners of the Bell game. For four straight years, the Central Spartans hosting Mount Carmel, Sun Devils at Cal Jones Field in El Centro. That's right. Now, these two teams don't meet very often. The last time they saw one another was in the playoffs in 2019. The Spartans won that game at Cal Jones Field 46-38. Central is the perennial power in the Imperial Valley, posting three straight 10 season wins, 10 win seasons, including this past spring's COVID shortened season. Exclude yeah. that one. Now, the big question though, Scott, for the Spartans this year is at quarterback. Last mm -hmm. year's starter, Jordan Reed, we've heard a lot about him, graduated, signed to play college football for Montana State. Just this past June, mm -hmm. that was. Congratulations to him, by the way. The two-way battle, though, for starting quarterback in this season opener was between senior Hayden Hernandez yep. and Holtville transfer Damian Rodriguez. Yeah, the starter was not named until just before kickoff. Uh, head coach uh, Rookie Pena very coy about uh, <laughs> naming one, pulling a Bill Belichick. I noticed his... that during the interview. <laughs> yeah, we were all just waiting. Right. But Yeah, the, uh, the Spartans also, though, return a lot of skilled position players and a strong secondary. However, the defensive line enters as a question mark. Let's see how they did and who started at quarterback in tonight's season opener. To Cal Jones Field as the Spartans take the field and a big change from last year with a packed house on hand, including Jordan Reed, who's now playing, as you mentioned, for Montana State. They welcome the Sun Devils from Mount Carmel to town. First drive of the game, Mount Carmel quarterback Caden Gent with a swing pass to Jaden Virgin, and Virgin is spun by the Spartans' defense and loses the ball. The Spartans come up with the fumble recovery, courtesy of number 68, Nicholas Jimenez. And watch as Jimenez politely gives the ball to the referee, <laughs> and then, yeah, big fella got it. Holtville transfer Damian Rodriguez would be named the starting quarterback and on the Spartans first drive he zings this pass right into your living room to Sergio Garcia who goes up and gets it busts a few tackles on his way to a first down moments later it's fourth and short Spartans go for it and give it to Charlie Sullivan he looks short they're going to bring in the chains to measure this one and eh, it's just short Sun Devils stand firm with the hold and they get the ball back late in the first quarter. Mount Carmel on the move. Check out this play as Caden Gent tosses back to Josh Bell. Bell gets hurried, still gets off a halfback pass and connects with Luke Sevier for the first down. First down, a few plays later, it's Gent on the quarterback keeper around the right side, and he scores from 20 yards out to put the Sun Devils on the board. They would miss the extra point. They'd have it blocked 6-0. Next to Burton's drive, near the end of the first quarter, Rodriguez gives the ball to Sullivan, and Charlie breaks loose around the end and gives a little shoulder blow at the end. Now, moments later, it's Rodriguez. He's going to show off his wheels. He rolls to the right and picks up a big gain for another first down. However, it would not be the Spartans' night as they lose at home 33-17. Penalties and three misses on fourth and short hurt them early. Well, now to Calexico, where the Bulldogs are coming off a 1-4 spring season. Mm -hmm. Damn. Yeah. <laughs> right. The good news, right. their lone win was against Southwest. It was the first win for the Bulldogs over the Eagles in the past seven years. Now, like many teams, the COVID-shortened season hit the Bulldogs and first-year head coach Fernando Solano very hard. The Bulldogs had only four seniors in the spring, and half of the starters were freshmen because several players opted out. Now, the Bulldogs entered tonight's game very young with about 10 seniors. Only five are returning seniors. Wow. Calexico would be put <laughs> to the test tonight. I mean, no other way to put it against a team. Many coaches in the Desert League feel would be a real force. Coach Grant's Palo Verde Yellow Jackets. Toward field, we take you with fans in the stands. The Bulldogs getting hyped up for the season opener as they should. Yellow Jackets, well, they're set to receive and get things started on offense. Fast forward now, trying to get it going with the run game, and they're swallowed by a Bulldog defense, and somewhere within that pile, that ball comes loose. Yes, on the first drive, Calexico with the fumble recovery. On that drive, the Bulldogs off to a good momentum booster for the first play of the season. They hand it to Abrams Azueta, and he's going to get by the defense on this. Takes it inside the 15 to get things started. Bulldogs coming off hot would end that drive in an interception in the end zone, though. A few plays later, Yellow Jackets now on the offense trying to get some momentum as they push yards on the Bulldogs. The next play, well, the stopping game would come alive for the Bulldogs. Palo Verde not successful on the run there attempt, but... Calexico would capitalize. They'd regain possession after this block run here by Calexico as well. The defense really waking up on this next play. Whoops, there it is right there for you. Wouldn't be able to 
to get momentum going on that drive. Like I mentioned, Calexico would regain possessions. Azueta gets his hands on this one again. Weaves through him, making it look easy. Whoop! Between the defenders to move the chains. Next play, Ernest Sanchez gets the rock, takes it to opposite field, and some. And wow, quite the hit from Palo Verde as well. But he's going to get up and shake that off as he uses his body on this next play to get a couple yards and some. So Bulldogs trying to get something going. They say, let's put it in shotgun. Zazueta looking for the end zone on this one. Heaves it up. It looks good. Unfortunately, falls in the hands of the Yellow Jackets. They're going to intercept that one. This game would be back and forth, and Calexico falls 15-6, to your final. Well, two games are in the books, and we have one more to go this opening night. We're definitely serving up a little dessert for you tonight. Yes, coming up next, we take you to Eagle Field in El Centro, where the Hopeville Vikings look to invade Southwest in the first meeting between the schools since 2015. It's Cocopa Casino's anniversary, and we're celebrating 28 years of fun for you and your neighbors. Every Friday and Saturday in August, Cocopa will randomly select players to win over $17,000 in rewards play. Not only could you win, but your neighbor wins too. Seven winners each drawing date will win rewards play, and your neighbor gets in on the action just for being close by. Just show up at Cocopa and play your favorite slots and table games with your rewards card. If you're not a member, just drop by the Cocopa Rewards Club and get your card. Membership is free. Winning is just around the corner at Cocopa Casino and Resort, South Highway 95 in Somerton. Nick Bolton here with the latest from Bell & Howell. We call them TAC Glasses. Inspired by the sunglasses worn by our heroes in uniform, TAC Glasses block blinding glares so well, invisible objects suddenly become visible. Enhance colors to give you vision as sharp as an eagle's and survive even the harshest conditions. Look, ordinary sunglasses just make things darker, which could be deadly in a tactical situation. TAC glasses improve optical clarity so you can see clearly even in low light. If you've never seen how this light filtering technology works, check this out. Nothing to see, right? But look again as we hold up our TAC glasses. A colorful American Eagle is revealed. Amazing. Act now to get your TAC glasses for just $19.99 and we'll even ship it to you free. So don't delay. Order yours today. To order, call 1-800-287-1705. Again, that's 1-800-287-1705 or order online at tritacglasses.com. The new Miracle Blade World Class 2012 <laughs> Professional Series is the best set of knives you'll ever own. The spectacular World Class 2012 Series, over a $300 value for just $39.95. But we're just getting started. We'll send you a complete second set of Miracle Blades for free. That's right, another entire set, a $300 value for free. Just pay shipping and processing. And we're still not done. If you're one of the first 500 callers, we'll send you two additional Miracle Blade World Class Slicers. That's an additional $80 value, totally free. Miracle Blade World Class is also guaranteed for life. We'll replace any damaged knife at any time for any reason for free forever. Over $600 worth of knives for just one payment of $39.95. Don't miss this opportunity. Call right now or just log on to MiracleBlade.com. You're watching Varsity Blitz. The best highlights, the best plays, continuing right now. Welcome back to the Varsity Blitz. Scott Gross along with Brandon Mejia. Tonight, despite being less than 20 miles apart, the Hopefield Vikings travel to Southwest to take on the Eagles for the first time since 2015. Whew. In a little while. <laughs> little Gotta little dust while. off the rust there. That's right. It's also the first time that the head coaches have squared off against one another. John Haynes is in his third year with Southwest, while Jason Turner enters his fifth year with Hopefield. Now, to set the stage for tonight's big showdown, we sat down with both head coaches to get their preview of tonight's game first. Here's John Haynes. I uh, don't know a ton about him. You know, we didn't see him in, in, in seven on seven this summer. We didn't see him in a carnival. Uh, so, you know, there's a little bit of mystery to him uh, as far as what they're going to do. We, you know, we think we have a good idea what they're going to do, but uh, you never really know till you get out there and, and uh, get going. So, but I think they're going to be a good, well-coached coach Turner coaches his butt off out there. Well, Holtville's bread and butter is running the football. But with 18 seniors graduated, the Vikings will have a lot of new faces on the field. Here's what head coach Jason Turner had to say about Southwest. Coach Haynes over there at Southwest, he's got some returning linemen. His strength is, is 
is are, are his linemen and and his his down the guys on the offensive defensive side and uh, we we completely expect Southwest to to, to be a, a strong competitor. There's no doubt. How would it play out? We had the Eagle Field to find out. <laughs> yeah. Here we go. Yeah, moving closer to the Yuma area, the final scrimmage. No, that's, uh, we're going to go highlights here. And it's going to be Holtville on the uh, scoreboard first. Yeah, the Eiton kid. He's good. He uh, gets tripped up by Southwest, gets a nice gain right there. And then it's going to be, yeah, let's give it to the Eiton kid again, this time around the left side. And he gone 60 Say yards. Going to put it on the board for Holtville. They're on, and uh, they're starting to. They're, they had the run game, Brandon. That's exactly that's what, what they're mentioned. using early on in this one. Definitely using it to their advantage. And here again, it's the other item this time. Yeah, we we saw Peyton the first time. Here's his brother with the touchdown around the right side, and it looks like. Uh, Holtville is going to roll on this one early on. Now, uh, Logan Youngers, a deep pass down the sideline. Youngers connects. Whoop, nice move and a tackle down low. Eagles are driving down the field. Younger, a sophomore this year, his brother Cameron led the 2017 Eagles to the state division 4A title game. Here's Youngers again running around the left side, and he'll get out of bounds for a big game just inside the goal line. And now they're just going to. Pound away yet again. The Eagles working their way down the field, looking a lot better than they did certainly a year ago. Still working on their drive, and why not give it to the big fella? <laughs> Let him eat. There <laughs> you go. Reminiscent of the 1985 Chicago Bears and refrigerator Perry barreling in to the end zone. This one would be close, but Holtville would hang on to this one and win by a score of 36 to 29. A great game yeah. at Eagle Field. Yeah, some great highlights as well. I'm loving it. Well, moving closer to the Yuma area, a final scrimmage went down earlier tonight between the Telegraph Pass rivals. We're talking about the Antelope Rams and the San Pasquale Warriors. These two teams are, were especially excited to get back to playing football. The Rams were ravaged with multiple game cancellations last fall, if you remember, due to COVID, and only got a handful of games to play. Meanwhile, San Pasquale Warriors didn't even get a season last year as the school completely shut down its entire athletic program due to the pandemic, and unfortunately, the scrimmage wasn't able to play. Yeah, it was a cancel because the Rams couldn't make it today. Uh, but we will have a preview on both teams next week. We'll hear from some uh, coaches yeah. and uh, definitely I know they're eager to get back out there, especially after last fall and how short those seasons were. So uh, yeah. I know they're missing it, but they'll have their time. Week one is in the books and so are some from out of town tonight. Let's take a look at uh, the week one scoreboard in case you missed it earlier in the show. Uh, we can't forget about uh, the games out of town right there. Yeah. You're going to see uh, that that's what we had earlier. Let's turn the page right here. We'll show you the out of town scoreboard. There we go. There we go. Brawley lost to Matter Day Catholic 53 21. And the Vincent Memorial, you can't see it there. 55 to 8. They lost to San Diego on the road. Yeah, tough losses there. And uh, when they come back home, well, maybe they can bounce back. Speaking of which, as we do wrap up week one, that means we are one step closer to week two. So, what do we have to expect? Uh, kind of hard to see on the screen. We're gonna, did, did we gotta, hey, hey, we're still going through some bugs, too. We're going to have to change out the graphic here. <laughs> Week one, let me write that down in the notebook. A little here. shiny. A little hard to see, but that's okay <laughs> because uh, that means we get to have a little fun with this. Southwest taking on Vincent next week. We got Castle Park coming into town, taking on Calexico. Uh, Desert Mirage taking on Calipatria. Antelope will play their first game at home next week against Highland Prep. Those are the home games for what we can expect. We turn the page. I know it's a little hard to see, folks. And but we're going to tell you. <laughs> we're going to tell you anyways. Some of the out-of-town games uh, to look forward to, at least. Brawley uh, heading over to Valley Center. That game is happening, of course, next week. Imperial will head to West Hills. <laughs> or too new. Too new, but you're <laughs> right. It's shiny new, shiny new toy. <laughs> Imperial right? heading to West Hills. Control. Uh, Yuma Catholic's going to head to Slam Acadia. San Pasquale will head out of town to Mattis Highland once again, folks. We appreciate you bearing with us. Yeah. We're going to have a little fun on the show sometimes. And, well, I guess the first show was a great example yeah. of it. Scott, what do we have left? Let's leave you this uh, today's best. Okay. Okay. Here are some of the top plays that we had tonight in the area. Uh, just a phenomenal day today. Uh, there's a Holtville, a running game earlier. going. Yeah, just Absolutely. a phenomenal day. I want to thank everybody that helped. Uh, Marina in the booth, you, Brandon, Rob, uh, Cole Johnson, uh, Luis Lopez. Uh, we had uh, uh, Eric Sawyer. We yeah. had uh, Jonathan uh, helped us with all the graphics. And mastermind uh, just, behind just it all, Scott Gross. Right. We thank you as well because it wouldn't be possible without you alongside. So that's going to do it for week one. That's going to do it for week one in the books. Thank you so much for joining us. Stick around. Stephen Colbert is next. Good night.